Hello right, everybody, this is Henry here. Coffee shop talk today is going to be about our history, the American history. And what's got me on this topic is, I'm sitting here texting and having dialogue with some young stranger out there in the world. He's 30, I'm 61. And he's hooked on one side or the other when it comes to views. And all I asked him to do was go back and look at history. You know, one thing I I learned from my parents, my grandparents, is that history does repeat itself. I've seen it repeat itself over the 60 years. Well, say I've become more aware when I was 20. So let's say 41 years, to be fair. So in 40 years, I've seen a lot of history repeat itself over and over and over. And it does if you don't educate people and you make them aware of the past and what it did to American culture and American people. The reason you have history and monument and statues and uh, museums is to people to educate them. And so they go and look at it and say, you know what, I don't want to live that again. That, that sounds like it sucked. That was terrible. So to have an individual in his 30s say, and he made this comment back to me. I said, look, at all I want you to do is go back to 1930s and look up some of the history in the, in the United States. Look at what things were voted on, how and what America did in 1930s. It had a huge impact on who we were. 1930s had a lot going on. So in doing that, he comes back and he says, well, what's that matter? What, what am I going to get out of doing that? I've looked at some of it. What's, what's it matter currently on the topic now? It means a lot. If you go back and look at the 1930s history of the American people, and you'll look at who was up and walking, who was doing what, and go in the 1960s and look at those people and what they were doing for history, and there was more, more famous people in there fighting evil and corruption and crime and what was going on. Look at the American history and look where we're at in the 21st century. Some things are starting to repeat themselves. Some of them things haven't even gone away. Some of them things are still actually happening in a modern day. And we've become normal and accepted to it. Actually, I think what we become, we become numb to it. And I think because we become numb to it, it doesn't matter. See, one thing I've learned about life and humans are, and anything, you can condition people to become numb to something and it becomes a normally. That's what predators do to kids. That's what abusive men or women do to their husbands or their spouses. That's what certain leaders do to their people is they condition them. You get conditioned that you can't do any more than what you're able to do. That goes back to the the flea story that I heard Steve Harvey talking about one time. Which potential was you can jump six feet, but you put it in a jar with six inches that has babies and the flea babies only can go six inches because that's what they're trained and conditioned to do by the mom and dad, even though their potential is to go higher. Well, humans have the potential of going to the moon. Uh, humans have many, 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 many from all different cultures, intelligent, super, super people, super brain power people, and they've also had their evil. They've had their evil, their evil people all over the planet. And some people have their reasons for why they were evil and why they did eugenics or they did genocide i ask you to go back and look at history all i'm asking you to do as an american citizen is go study history go back to the 1930s or even further back go back as far as you can find and listen to what's being done and what happened in in america or around the planet look at eugenics go back and look at that and how evil it was and what it's planned and what people thought there's still people today i believe would believe in eugenics. And they may call it a different name. I'm not going to get into that topic. You can figure it out yourself. But history can repeat itself. Or it can stay the same. And some people have deep-seated roots and beliefs based on their family and where they're raised. On any topic you want to get into, I've found out many human beings are conditioned and trained that way. And a lot of them you're not going to change. You're not going to change their mind. So the reason you have the history and the books of it and documentation and museums and statues and what's going on is to help remind people that this is an era of horrificness that a country, doesn't matter where it is, any country, should not and, and should never ever go back to. Okay, there's, there's documentation of black plagues and diseases and mishandling of it. How did it go right? Did it go wrong? It's got a... It's got... Uh, eugenics and uh, the killing of people because they're not fit enough and don't meet requirements or they're afraid of overpopulation. There was a lot of myths. You can go back to the witch hunt 
in the United States and go back to what happened with that and why that was happening. So you learn from history of what took place in a culture, a country, wherever you're at, and then you need to look at it and go, huh, is this possible today? Can it happen today? Is it happening now? Why do we do it this way? I try to get into people's minds and get it to open up and not just stay focused on what they believe or they have passion for or you can't have emotions on it. This one individual I'm talking about has a lot of emotions. He even made a comment, you know, he got me all riled up. And then, and then I'm like, wait a minute. Then he poked at me and said, well, I got you riled up. No, he didn't get me riled up. I'm very cool, calm, and very, very collected person. I'm very well-educated, self-educated. I'm very well-off in other avenues of my life. I don't need to explain that to you. Um, I know all my coworkers, friends, and family who's around me. I'm the golden light, the pinnacle. I try to leave an influence. I try to help people. I uh, get nicknames of all kinds of crazy stuff. And there's a reason for it. Because I try to make people's lives better. I try to help educate them. And you can't move forward and you can't make logical decisions when you're not educated and you don't understand the past and you can't overlay it on the future and say, wow, these things are happening now. I don't agree with these things. You need to look down in your moral character, right? Your empathy and your character and and think about it. This individual also says, well, he runs two small businesses. Well, I find it kind of hard when you get riled up real fast and then you start name calling. So if you're a business owner or a CEO of a business, and you get all riled up that fast, and how do you treat your employees? Or do you have any employees? You know, you got to stay cool, calm, and collect, but you've also got to have uh, quantitative evidence, and you've got to be able to speak clearly, and you got to control your emotions, and you got to understand the past and the history and how it overlays to what the future is. you got to. You can't just, just go on emotion and make a shitty comment on the Internet and think that you took control of the situation. Not going to happen. So let me, let me explain something about humans. There's very small cultures of humans that actually work together and work together unifiedly. There's a lot of tribes still over in Uganda and over in Africa that the man has 10, sometimes 20 wives, and they all work as a team, and they scrounge around, and they hunt that way. We don't do that here in America. We don't have that. What we have is we have humans that want to push, pull, and be leaders, right? There's no unity like those, those tribes that work over there to survive every day. And there's no way they could have some hierarchy, somebody being better than the next because they end up killing each other or the whole tribe would starve. So unfortunately in America, we don't have that. There's some, some people here in America, Native American Indians, that still try to work as a tribe, still try to hold on to traditions, which is very important to their history. And I agree with that. I didn't, my parents come over, my grandparents come over from Germany, from what I know, Dutch, German, that's all I know. Um, I really tried to dig in my past. I really haven't got gone much more than that. But they came over here. They came over here properly. They came over here and they built a life for themselves. And then my parents had me. So I can't go and say I lived in the past. Didn't. I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, 2000, now the 2020s. So I can tell you where I see things going, going wrong, where I see things in a culture shift. And I get that. But you also got to understand we have to, as human beings, respect each other. We have to be able to communicate with each other. And we got to watch how we have personally attack someone's character. There's no need for that. So typically, from what I've learned in life, is somebody that doesn't know history, hasn't gone and taught themselves, and when you try to speak it or use facts, what they do is they go to a personal character attacks. They, they don't know how to have any other way. It's called fight or flight. So what happens is the mind's trying to fight. And eventually what it does is it, it flights, it leaves. Because it can't fight. Because it doesn't have any quantitative evidence or information or history behind it to go ahead and fight the person that's having a logical discussion. That's just, that's just what I've seen. Um, I try to have the discussion openly with people on any topic they wish. I, I am an open book. You, it doesn't matter what you want to talk to me about, how you want to talk to me about it. Now, you can get out of control And I won't try to maintain control because I'm a Virgo and that's what I do. I harmonize with people and I make them try to stay positive and and point to the point. Because a lot of people right away when they feel their characters attack will attack your character, especially when it comes to history and facts. They just hate it. And when you try to push them into facts, they just fight it. Well, they'll change the subject matter. It's always something. 
they're trying to steer from. Stay with the facts. But my coffee shop talk is with anybody that's listening. You need to go study history in America and understand how we walked. You can't talk the talk if you haven't learned to walk. You got to look at the, how they walk, what people went through, and how we are from then and where we are now. And we don't need to go trans backwards. We don't need to go backwards. We don't need to transfer backwards. Okay? And we don't need to do that. Everybody has a decision. Everybody has a voice. And everybody has the right to speak their mind. It's, it's okay to talk fair, square, and evenly and not be nasty or bully somebody or try to demeanor them. It doesn't pay. It doesn't make sense. Don't do it. So, again, go back to history and talk about history. And look up your history and understand it before you march forward. Before you make comments, look at the history, look at facts, do your research. Don't take some bit of information from somebody and think it's all that is correct. Go do your research. Go look at it, Google it, find it, book it, read it. Try to get as much as you can. Listen to how people are talking, how they carry themselves and what they mean. People will tell you their true belief and who they are by what they say. But go do your research on history and learn something about human beings. They're not always friendly. They're not always kind. And it definitely wasn't a great time back in the early days in, in the world. Let's go study your history. Go learn something. All right? Henry's out. That's my coffee shop talk. Good luck.